Okay, I'm going to show you what I do to clean out my brush. Okay, I've already taken the paint out. Let me flip my screen over here so I can see. Okay. I've already taken the paint out with my eyedropper. And I've saved the paint because I had quite a bit of it in there. And here I got that cleaner I was talking about. I fill my cup. And I usually reuse this Q-tip. So be careful, don't spray your painting. But the Q-tip I was using for tip dry, which I have no uh, problem with tip dry here. Not with the E-Tac. Um, Createx illustration, yes, I will have some tip dry. Alright. I got my little bucket here. I got my spray bucket there. And I will give a Good swirl. Then I'll dump a couple times. Now I'll flip my Q-tip over to the clean end. And clean that inside of that cup again. Once my cup is clean, then I will take, fill the cup with the cleaner, spray it through. Okay. And that's flushing out all that color that's in there. It's not going to be perfect. One thing that I have learned over years is I would go through nozzles too quickly. And uh, they would leak. They would begin to not function properly. I wouldn't get good spray. And after some conversations with other artists, and uh, I have come to the conclusion that there's not always that need to fully break down your brush every day in and out. So right now, I've got cleaner in there. The cup was clean. I'm just spraying and letting go, back flushing to get that rinsed fairly well inside the cup or inside the paint chamber. Now I've got a full cup of clean cleaner with no paint in it. And I'm spraying that through. Oh, ah, here we were painting that flesh tone. I could have hit that spot on the nose. Oh well, I got, I got time to do that. Alright, I'll do this several times. Now this is uh, a little more aggressive cleaner mix that I've got here. I mean, it's not going to damage the rubber O-rings unless you left it in the uh, brush. Okay. I take off my handle. Put a little more cleaner in. Alright. Give it a little shot. And I play with the trigger like this. What that's doing is that it's pulling that needle in and out. Alright. As you are painting, that needle pulling backwards, you're getting paint back into that, onto that packing bearing. Now it should be scraping off, but there's still, paint gets in there. I'm sorry, I've been doing this for so long, I know it does get in there. Another thing I'll do is I'll loosen my chuck nut on the back end of the brush. I keep my crown cap on, put it in the brush, I just hold the trigger. And I'll spray as I pump that needle in and out till I hear that the cup is empty. You'll hear that noise because you're really flushing that through now. All right, that's what I do for a day-to-day -day cleaning. I will take off my crown cap. 
carefully because now I got the needle sitting there exposed. I've got cleaning brushes here. So take my clean water, wet the end of my cleaning brush and clean out this inside of this crown cap because from spraying it in that bucket there is now got dried paint on the inside of the crown cap. Once in a great while I do leave the crown cap on to spray but not too often. I'm looking in there I see some paint stuck in there. It's not gonna matter if I leave paint in here but I prefer not to. If it gets too built up I can throw this in some restore and just leave it set. Okay, that's good. Now I'll do this. I'll get some just fresh water into this now. And I'll spray inside that crown cap. Just water. Now that's clean. Tip of that needle now. At the end of my week I will pull, after what I just did, pull the needle out. Only after cleaning. Do not do that while you've got pain in there. You will have a mess. Give me one minute. I'm going to grab some paper towel. Alright, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's paint on there still. Even though I just cleaned it really well in there. Now usually what I'll do when I get to the point I was just at, you can see that on the paper, there's paint. So I'll wipe this until it's clean, and I'll set my needle aside. And during the week, I will have just left that needle in there, and I will put some, I just happened to use it, I'll put some 4011 reducer, 4011 is very mild, and I'll put that in the brush and leave it wet and put it away. And I'll leave it so that the opening for the cup is facing up, that way it doesn't drain out on me as it sits. What I do at this point is I've got my airbrush cleaning brushes. I take the real fine one and I don't want to put any more cleaner through it but I put water in my little cup here and then I'll put water in here. I wet the brush and then I'll put it in from the back side of the needle chuck that is still loose and I'll go in and out and clean that packing bearing the edge of it and then I'll spray until I hear that the water is gone I don't want to pull it back with the water there it just finished while I'm still blowing air through it I pull this out that way I'm not sucking paint or water or dirty stuff back in through here to get down into the trigger area you don't want to do that your trigger will eventually start sticking on you this is all clean now you think so at this point I pull off my cup I will pull off my crown cap then I take the nozzle head off or the whole head I do not take the nozzle off because the nozzle's titanium, made of titanium, and is very hard. The body of the airbrush is um, it's brass, brass or copper. 
but anyways it's softer so taking the nozzle out and putting it back in repeatedly over time wears out those threads and then you get a horrible seal and then your brush no longer sprays as well and it's not that you can't replace the nozzle you can't replace the threads in the body so for this I take a dental pick or a dental tool go inside the tube that leads up to the nozzle And I just wash that around a little bit, rinse my brush back off. That's like any dried paint that might be in there at all, which there shouldn't be at this point. Then I will take a soft bristle brush. Now I can go all the way up to the nozzle. All right. And I just put that in and out there. And I've got a fine liner brush. I do the same thing. And I try to make sure I get it all the way in until it's poking out the end of the nozzle. Now you won't be able to see it. I can barely see it. But you'll notice the bristles sticking out of the nozzle tip that's up here. That's clean. Now I know my I'm fully clean inside this head. Set this down trying to find a, a where there's no dirt now I will take this dental brush and I will clean inside the hole to go into the body of the brush from the cup and then I will also clean inside that same chamber with this now this is overkill but this is why I know every week I don't have paint in there see and actually just then when I dipped that bristles into that water I saw a little bit of paint and that's after all that thorough flushing now if I put it away wet that's not going to dry in there but that's okay and that that you can suffice with that but if you're going to put it away dry and it's at the end of the week you don't want to do that now what i do is i take my bottle and i pour it in i force it through the hole where the cup goes in and it comes out the nozzle i'll spray some air through it to clear out any water that's in there Next, this is how I seal my brush. Now you gotta watch half of my painting just to get to this cleaning part. <laughs> how tricky of me. All right, let's put a new seal on this. Pay very close attention. This has saved me for certain. And I'm not going to do the nozzle, but I'll show you how to do there was beeswax on these threads on the head. The nozzle's still sealed. I didn't pull that apart, so and I'm not going to today. Okay. Alright. All right. If I could get this lined up correctly. There we go. Start your threads on that. Now I gotta go get two more things. It'll only be a second. I gotta get a toothpick and I gotta get a lighter. You could use a needle, which would be a little easier for some people, or you can use a toothpick like I do. I just got a fireplace, uh, whatever you want to call it, charcoal lighter. I got this beeswax, Murray's beeswax. Just got it from the drug, uh, my local drug store, or the farm, excuse me, the pharmacy area. 
of my local uh, Wegmans food store. But it comes from the pharmacy. So you get some beeswax on the end of that Q-tip. And where you've left that open a little, you put some beeswax on those threads. Don't do this without seeding it into the airbrush because then if you get beeswax into if you get beeswax inside the head of the brush that could get into your paint you don't want that you don't want to put too much you don't want to glob it all over the place but you want a good a fair amount all the way around okay now this part be real careful light your lighter and just lightly pass it over that beeswax to soften it a little it melts it into those threads you don't want to heat the end of the brush you just want to heat that beeswax because if you heat that brush you're going to melt your o-ring while it's still real soft screw it the rest of the way in Take your paper towel, go with righty tighty, and just clean off any beeswax that's on the outside. That's how I seal my brush. This has saved me from going crazy for a long time. The better that seal, the better this brush is going to spray. A micron yes but they don't spray perfect unless you seal that head because you're forcing the suction the other part is make sure you've got a little resistance on your packing bearing to your needle if you don't feel any tension at all I mean it's got to be very light tension not much at all now this is my difficult part I don't want to whack that needle tip. Make sure my trigger's down. Feed that in. And once you hit that packing bearing, you should feel it grab a little, a little tiny bit, just a little grab on that. That way you know it's tight enough. If it's not, take a little screwdriver, put it in these slots. That's why I would have made that. And give just a tiny bit of, of a turn. Now, your brush is sealed and perfectly cleaned at the end of the week. Each day you can do the flush and then put a little reducer in it. And that will keep that brush nice and wet in there so that it doesn't dry up. Do not, I would not suggest 4011 reducer in there, or 4012 or anything uh, more intense, like, uh, well, yeah, anything of 4012 or anything, the fast reducers or anything like that. I wouldn't even leave water in there. Water, uh, especially tap water, if you're using tap water, it, it's too, uh, too many chemicals in there. You know, it'll clog up your brush after a while. I use distilled water. But what I will do, like I said, is I got my 4011 reducer which is very mild first I'm gonna break down the bottom of my cup take that off make sure I don't lose my Teflon little Teflon pad in the bottom there give that a good wipe now if you've got stuck on paint real hard stuck on paint you can use like I said earlier, the uh, uh, acetone nail you know, polish remover. I, I clean that off. I wipe the base of this off. I'll take that dental brush. The dental brush fits right in the hole in this cup. And then this end 
because it's inevitable no, ma no matter how much I rinse I always find a little bit of paint residue in this then I take my water stick it on the hole I don't know if you can see that but I spray it through now my cup is perfectly clean Cup's done, cup is clean. Now this is what I do for the 4011. I'm going to put it away wet this this time. Normally with all that I just did, I wouldn't do that. And I generally do the beeswax only after I've done a complete breakdown clean. So I'll put a little bit of 4011 reducer. I just give us a quick spray, pull that off. This has got a little in it, so that stays wet. This has got it in there. If you look in your feed hole, you can see the reducer in there. So this chamber is all full. Put on my cap. Close my uh, trigger uh, distance. And then I wipe down my brush. Now you heard the air go because I pressed down on that trigger a little bit, but since I've got this closed off, it's not going to pull back and spray out that reducer. And I like to clean my brush like this. This part I do every day because I've got very oily fingers and hands. And I don't want my oils of my hands destroying that beautiful chrome nickel plated chrome finish and there you go that's how i clean my brush pop that off my hose put it away remember with the feed side up so that the reducer doesn't leak out there you have it that's how i clean it we will be back and painting on these hands and getting some more done tomorrow okay god bless and uh Put that to practice that's that's good advice i've been doing this for oh my gosh uh coming on 36 years of airbrushing 37 let's see i was 17 i can't do math that's why i'm an artist <laughs> i'm not a mathematician but anyways i've been doing it since i was 17 years old and i'm now 56 so lots of years 31 years. I don't know, this is 2018. Yeah, something like that. Don't trust my math. Trust my artwork and the Lord. Amen. Uh, biggest thing, trust the Lord. All right. God bless, and we will be back tomorrow with some more painting.